Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And back here for game two and game three of this series. And last episode, I did not show the ALDS. So you can see Houston and the Yankees are meeting up in the ALCS. So that's going to be a pretty good matchup as the Yankees took care of business versus the Red Sox. And then Houston took care of business. So we move on to this game two action as we have Harleen Garcia on the mound for us. And we got to take this game because if we go up two games to none, we're in the driver's seat. We can't let them get momentum going back to D.C. So here we are in the first inning. Harleen Garcia with two outs facing Brian Dozier does get a pop up here in the first inning. So that is going to end this inning as it's a good start. I mean, I'll take it. It's a good start. So here is Lewis Brinson and we are facing Max Scherzer. And, you know, I haven't shown many episodes, as many episodes I've shown facing the Nationals. I've never shown, I've shown one game, I believe, facing Max Scherzer. And we haven't seen playoff Max Scherzer. So this is gonna be tough as uh, we get two quick outs here and Domingo Santana, can he get going? But nope, he flies out to Tommy Pham in right field. So no runs on the board through the first frame. So now on to the second inning. Here is Harleen Garcia getting going, striking out Zimmerman on the high heat that time. And now uh, the next batter comes up with two outs and flies out to Lewis Brinson in center field. So now we're moving along in this game onto the top of the third inning. And Giovatella continues to uh, hit the ball well as he gets a hit to the right side. And he's the one guy that's been pretty consistent for us even through last year. I mean, he's kind of, you know, that guy that's just a wild card. I don't know what it is, but he's never been a career great hitter. But he's just going in this franchise as Brinson ends the inning, though, with a ground ball to Scherzer. So now on to the top of the fourth inning. Anthony Rendon getting the hit up the middle off of Harleen Garcia. So this is the first real action Harleen Garcia has seen up to this point. And here is Brian Dozier coming to the plate, and he hits one hard. This time over the third baseman's head to left field. And now they're going to have guys on first and second with Ryan Zimmerman coming to the plate. And he hits one past Beltre. Josh Bell in left field comes up throwing, throws to the cutoff man. And with 34 speed, Anthony Rendon comes all the way around to score. And the Nationals are going to get on the board first in this game as they keep this inning going with the hit to right field. So Harleen Garcia getting into a little jam here in a 3-2 count. Bases loaded. Gets Michael Brantley to strike out looking on that one. So now one out here with Evan Gaddis coming to the plate. And he does exactly what I need him to do. Grounds into the double play on that one. And now the Nationals take this one nothing lead going into the middle frames here in the fifth inning. And an easy ground ball almost beats that one out off of Harleen Garcia's glove. And here comes Trey Turner to the plate. And he gets a hit to the right field, right center gap. And look at Domingo Santana. He can't field this one cleanly. Stumbles. And Trey Turner with that 89 speed gets into second base. So here comes Adam Eaton, who's been hot. And look at Trey Turner. He's swiping a bag on this one, setting up an easy run situation. And Adam Eaton delivers with the ground ball. I maybe should have had the infield in on that one. But I thought I could get a pop-up maybe. And Harleen Garcia gives up another run as he gives up a deep fly on this one and Anthony Rendon is going to take that one 421 feet over the left field wall and that is going to be a devastator I mean he was kind of doing okay two runs given up you know our offense just hasn't been getting going in this game so far but three runs man I mean we're facing Max Scherzer on the mound as with two outs, Marchado does make a nice throw this time and gets us out of the inning. 
but not before the damage is done. Three nothing here for the Nationals and Scherzer on the mound continuing his dominance as he gets a grounder from Real Muto that time. Now a liner to Brian Dozier from Beltre and Giovatella. Can he keep it going? And look at this. I mean, G Giovatella is just hot. I mean, he's just hitting the ball pretty well for us. But we need Danny Valencia off the bench. Remember, we did this the last game of the season. We brought him off the bench, and he hit a uh, go-ahead home run pretty much. But nope, not this one. He strikes out at a pitch in the dirt as we move on to the sixth inning here as Josh Bell hits a fly ball to left field. That one is going to be caught as Domingo Santana comes up, but he hits a hard ground ball to second base, so our offense is just not getting going in this game as Adrian Beltre comes up, and he strikes out as well. And the Marlins still have this 3 to nothing deficit here in the eighth inning as they get the fly ball this time. To the catcher, Evan Gaddis, as Giovatella flies out. So we bring in a Lieri Garcia because nothing is working in this game. So we bring in a pinch hitter, and Lieri Garcia gets a uh, hit by pitch this time and boards first base. So now Lewis Brinson comes up, two outs, 2-2 two -two count, but he can't get it going either. So now we're moving on to the ninth inning as Scherzer is just pitching a gem in this one. Josh Bell comes to the plate, and he starts this inning out with a hit over Trey Turner's head, and he's going to get on to first base with a hit. So now we have the middle of our order coming up as Domingo Santana comes up, but he flies out to left field and that one is going to be caught by Adam Eaton in center I mean the offense is just not getting going in this game at all so here is Manny Machado can he display some power here but he flies out I mean these pitches are right down the middle pretty much and I think it's just the movement on these pitches Max Scherzer is just too overpowering as he has one more out here in this game with Justin Bohr coming up and Justin Bohr strikes out. I mean, Max Scherzer proves that he is literally, literally the probably the best pitcher in the game. In real life, he's definitely the best pitcher in the game right now because you see that Clayton Kershaw is just not Clayton Kershaw, but Max Scherzer is still Max Scherzer as he goes the distance in this game. Six strikeouts, only giving up four hits, one walk, and the complete game is completed by Max Scherzer. And now we're on to game three. And we move on to D.C. as Lewis Brinson grounds out to second base as Josh Bell comes up. And we are facing Gio Gonzalez. And, you know, we've had success versus Gio Gonzalez here in the, reg in the regular season. But now in the playoffs, it's a little different because there's a lot more pressure. Pitchers step it up, batter step it up, everybody steps it up. But here in the first inning, we can't get anything going. So here's Anthony DiSclefani here on the mound for us. And he had a pretty good season. I think he finished 11-7. and seven. He had a really good whip. And remember, he took the last two years off of baseball. He, didn't, he probably played in the minors, I think, last year. I don't think he took that year off. But he definitely didn't play at the MLB level. And... He's been a pretty good pickup for us. We signed him to a two-year contract, so he will be on the team next year. So I'm looking forward to the future we have with him. And right now, here he is getting going on the mound, getting out of the first inning. No damage done. And on to the second inning, continuing that pitching dominance. Tommy Pham missing the changeup on that one. And here's Ryan Zimmerman coming to the plate. And he grounds up the middle. But take a look. I mean, that hit Di Sclafani straight in the forehead. And he does have to come out of the game with an injury. So that is a big blow to this team because we have to face a decision. Do we bring in Jose Urania and uh, forego his uh, pitching in game four? Or do we bring him in in this game? So we decide to save him for game four. We bring in... Uh, Despagne because we probably won't be pitching him in game five anyway so we decided to bring in Despagne and as a long reliever he was okay during the season we did have to move him into the rotation as we traded 
Estrada, but Bruh. man, look at this. I mean, this is this is pretty frustrating. We bring him in out of the bullpen, and immediately the Nationals start teeing off as Josh Bell probably has the worst throw. One of the worst throws. I mean, he's just not a left fielder as Beltre lets a little dribbler go right past me, tries to barehand it. I mean, you can't barehand it in the playoffs. You got to make the play. So we bring in Bartolo Colon Jr. here with one out because we know he's a ground ball pitcher and he gets just that. Trey Turner grounds out into the double play as we give up one run here in that inning. But on to the top of the fourth inning. Here is Lewis Brinson getting going. 3 1 count. He takes that one deep to left field over the left fielder's head and you know with that 78 speed he's rounding second heading to third and he's gonna slide in safe here and we're setting up a run situation all he's got to do is make contact here as Josh Bell comes up he drives one deep to center field but that one is going to be caught by Adam Eaton but easy tagging up on that one tying in this game up at one apiece as with one out, this inning is still alive as Domingo Santana comes to the plate. And he hits one over the first baseman's glove. And he's rounding first, headed to second. And Tommy Pham doesn't have the greatest arm strength. And Domingo Santana slides into second here with the double. So this inning is still alive. Can Manny Machado come up? He gets a hanger over the middle. And he's going to take this one deep to right field. But Tommy Pham is going to be under that one as we got a guy on third base, Adrian Beltre. Can he drive this run in? He gets a hanger as well. But this time he just grounds out to Brian Dozier and only one run in that inning. But we tie the game up. So now on to the fourth inning, bottom of the fourth inning. Zimmerman getting going with the hit up the middle. So the Nationals getting this inning started. I mean, they have bats all through this lineup. I mean, everybody on their team can hit. And as you can see, Michael Brantley flies up the center fields. But Evan Gaddis comes up on a 3-0 count. He takes one deep. He sees a pitch he likes. And that is going to be a home run here for Evan Gaddis. And Evan Gaddis has actually hit a few home runs off of us this year. And none bigger than that one as the Nationals take the 3-1 to one lead here in the fourth inning. So we had to bring in Trevor Cahill. And the thing about Trevor Cahill, he's probably going to be done with us after this season. He's He was okay in the first season. We pretty much got him for... Uh, just to have some depth in the rotation. But, you know, he's just not the greatest pitcher. But this inning, he does get it done. So on to the top of the fifth inning. Justin Bohr comes up, and he drives one deep. And that one is going to hit off of the foul pole as Justin Bohr drives one in, and he makes this a one-run deficit here in the fifth inning. And Justin Bohr hasn't gotten really going in this playoffs, but this time drives it deep to right field off of the foul pole. And he's going to make this a manageable game as JT Remuto kind of has cooled off a little bit. He flies out to Tommy Pham. Johnny Giovatella flies out to Adam Eaton. So here with two outs here, we kind of make a decision. We keep Trevor Cahill in the game, so he hits for himself. We probably should have done that because he grounds out to the second baseman that time, Brian Dozier, and the Nationals are going to come to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And what do you know? Adam Eaton, another hit, but he's rounding second, headed. He's rounding first, head to second, and look at this, man. On a routine hit up the middle, he gets a double. So now here comes Anthony Rendon to the plate. But at least we get the strikeout on that one. But here comes Brian Dozier, who really hasn't gotten going up to this point. He hits one hard up the middle. But with the shift we had out, I didn't even notice the outfield was deep. And we allow a run to come in as the Nationals take the 4-2 lead here in the NLCS Game 3 as they get this inning. And this inning keeps going as we have to bring in Danny Barnes after that hit. 
We need to get out of this inning with only one run of damage, and Ryan Zimmerman comes to the plate, and he flies out to Giovatella. So here with two outs, here is Michael Brantley, and we get the ground ball to end this inning. But a two-run deficit going into the top of the seventh inning as pretty much no offense besides those two runs have pretty much happened for the Miami Marlins. So here is Adrian Beltre. Can he get it going? Nope. He flies out to Tommy Pham in right field. As with two outs, Justin Boer comes up, hit a home run earlier. So they avoid him. They're smart. They avoid him. So here's Gio Gonzalez facing JT Ramuto. He takes one deep. But that is not deep enough. And it, this might be it for the Miami Marlins as we move on to the top of the ninth inning facing Trevor Gott as Josh Bell can't get going. I mean, we are just not hitting the ball well. The Nationals, you saw that. It was 11 hits going into the top of the ninth inning as Domingo Santana drives this one deep, but not deep enough. The warning track is our enemy in this series so far as Manny Machado comes up. He keeps this inning going, and he gets a two out here in the top of the ninth inning, and Adrian Beltre gets going as well. So now guys on first and second, our man Justin Boer hit a home run earlier. Can he do it again? Nope, he grounds out to Brian Dozier as the Nationals take this one as well. The grounder ends it, and the Nationals take the 2-1 to -one lead. Kind of how they did in their last series. Remember the NLDS? They lost their first game, then they took the next three. But you can see here, we lose this one, so we are in jeopardy of going into game four. We might have a chance to be in this hole going back home in game five. So we never know. So we got to win this game four and tie this series up. But the offense has just been pretty dead. I mean, this games two and three, the offense has been dead. So hopefully we turn around. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. You don't want to miss any action coming up. So stay tuned. Let's get it.